Season's greetings from St. Peter's Episcopal Church in Oxford, Mississippi. Wherever you are, I hope this message finds you in good health and in good spirits. And I pray that this worship offering will be a blessing to you and a source of comfort and joy as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. A very Merry Christmas to you all. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. to God in the highest, 
and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. God, you have given your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the same Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. And his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. 
He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, ye families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes. When he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness. And the peoples with his truth. A reading from Paul's letter to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, 
the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. About five years ago, a German supermarket chain released a holiday television ad and it immediately went viral. Featuring an old man, the viewer quickly presumes to be widowed as he is alone. And one by one, he starts to receive telephone calls and voicemails from his children and his grandchildren, all telling him that they love him, that they miss him, but that they won't be able to make it home to be with him for Christmas again. We'll try again next year, they promise. We're so Sorry, things are just so hectic. Pretty soon thereafter, the man's children begin getting what appear to be rather upsetting messages on their phones. Your father has died, the viewer quickly learns. You need to change your holiday plans and you need to come home. Devastated, heartbroken, they all then board flights. They meet at the airport and they arrive home together. But as they walk in and as they round the corner into the dining room, they see the table nicely set, a Christmas tree beautifully decorated and a fire softly burning. Just then they look up to see their father walking slowly around the corner, nicely dressed as if for a holiday meal. And they stare at him wide eyed with what seems to be equal parts shock dismay, and disbelief. How else could I have brought you all together? The father asks. How else? Now, I know it's not the same faking a death and celebrating a miraculous birth, but perhaps there is a similar drastic final effort sort of element to the story of Jesus' birth. How else, after all, could God finally and ultimately get our attention and settle us down from the untethered grind of our daily routines? How else could he have brought this busy world together when we're constantly in competition and conflict, feverishly pulling and struggling in so many different directions with so many varying interests? 
How else could he call us back home to himself, back to a life of faithfulness, love, hope and peace, back to the tender care and devotion that are absolutely necessary for us to even notice him at work within and around us? How else? And so for us, when we show up year after year at the manger scene, when we travel in our hearts and in our minds to Bethlehem to hear and to proclaim the good news of great joy, to see and to bear witness to this miraculous gift, this breakthrough of love and redemption, maybe we have a similar experience of disbelief. No matter how many times we've been, we might still ask ourselves quietly, how could it be? It's a story that on the surface seems so illusory, so utterly implausible, but I would also be willing to bet that we also share a sense of wonder and of awe and abiding belief in the transcendent truth of it all because it resounds in the innermost recesses of our spirits with a profound sense of promise that God could and indeed did act in this most wonderful way. And maybe that's what draws us here year after year. Nothing that is possible can save us, wrote American poet W.H. Alden. We who must die demand a miracle. Nothing that is possible can save us. What Alden meant, of course, was that the deepest problems of our lives, our greatest challenges and struggles, the things that keep us up, at night, the things that fill us with fear and anxiety during the day, the things that we try everything possible to avoid dealing with, our own sinfulness, ultimately, our innermost brokenness and the brokenness of this world, it is all ultimately what we must come to realize outside of our control and beyond our ability to fix or correct on our own with our own limited faculties and resources. And so we must in many cases, begin to look outside of ourselves to something greater, something that would likely at first glance seem hard to believe and accept. And so it's no surprise then that the story of Emmanuel, the story of God with us in the flesh, in the person of Jesus, in time, space, and embodied experience, it's a story that's so full of things that don't seem possible. Miracles and revelations that defy the laws of nature and supersede that which is within our power and capacity as human beings. And yet, this story, as difficult as it may be sometimes to believe, it is absolutely and perfectly easy to comprehend. It's as familiar as a family gathered around a dinner table or in a hospital room. It's as basic and primitive and natural as the cycle of life and death, a cycle we can all witness and fully share and understand as human beings. The language of Jesus' birth is one that is, in fact, universally translatable. God on earth, God among us, wrote St. Basil. No longer the God who gives us law amid flashes of lightning, but the God who speaks gently and with kindness in a human body to his kindred, God in the flesh. Perhaps this is the point that needs to be made most clear. From the very beginning, this story, this miraculous act, this seemingly impossible breakthrough and communication of divine and transformative grace and truth and love, it has always It has always unfolded against the backdrop of uncertainty, disbelief, fear, and resistance. God has always been with us as one of us through all of the joys and all of the terrors of life and everything in between. And for over 2,000 years now, and for 2,000 more, and for 2,000 more after that, he will always do whatever it takes to get our attention to heal us and to make us whole, to remind us of what's most important in this life and to call us back home where we belong. This is why we drop what we're doing every year 
why this year we will, many of us, take a risk, a very slight and a highly mitigated risk, but a risk nonetheless to be together. It's why we will don our masks and our heavy coats and gather together in the freezing cold. It's why we'll join with our community in a pavilion to gather around a holy table that has been prepared for us to be reminded, to insist, and to then go out and proclaim that the light of our Lord will always shine in the darkness and the darkness will never, ever overcome it. Do not be afraid, said the angel, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. How else could God have brought us all together? How else? Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, 
and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Brian, our bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Peter, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God, to you, O Lord our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen.
May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the Word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and those beloved to you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. the vestry we wish our saint peter's family and all who are watching a very merry christmas we love you we miss you stay well